We want to start just where you are today, and that is, I'm sure you're all thinking about my classroom, or for some people who are not going to be um, working in a classroom right at the beginning, they will be working um, as a supply teacher and moving into classrooms, and just and have that, you all have a sense of that list in your brain, that multiple list of things that you feel you need to do. And it's probably fairly scrambled right now, because when I think back to what I was like a week before school, it, they, you know, it was like everything was all over my brain. And there was no map for me yet. And I would start one task, and then I'd think of something, and then I'd run over <laughs> here and start something else, and then I'd forget what I was doing over here. And you know, we all go through that, and eventually we get it all sorted. But today what we want to do is, in your five groups, together make a collaborative list of things that are on your mind about getting this classroom ready for the first day of school. What are all the things that are on your list? Um, and after you've gone through that and just get them all out there, we'd like you to try to categorize, categorize them. So see a pattern of how, uh, you know, what things fit with each other. We want you to go back now as a group and, and look at what you've done and say, what in this list is the most urgent? What feels to me the thing, the number one thing? If I only had you know, one day, where would I put my energy in order to make my classroom the best it can be to welcome these children? So which, which category is the most essential for you? And then that's what we're going to present to each other. and making sure like I I guess it's part of it but just making sure I'm ready and calm and feeling like I can start the year from a good space and part of that is all of the little details but part of it is just personal and how I get myself ready for the year for me being in a in a role that's not a classroom teacher um, the most important thing for me is what information about the kids do I want the teachers to have right away and what can we take time getting to know like what about each student's needs do they need to know is it a hearing impairment or is it something about behavior that when they walk through the door the teacher needs to have that information. I think for me, I'm not, I don't have my own classroom this year, but if I did, it would be sort of a general layout of the year. Like I need, I need a long-term sort of visual plan about how it's all going to go before anything, before I can look at any specific things. Um, so that would be sort of a general calendar of all eight months, whatever it is. Yeah, I relate to that too, in the sense that like after I have the actual physical space set up to the degree that I feel like it's organized and I feel calm about the way that it's arranged, mm -hmm. then I agree, I almost want to decide like, okay, like this is what I'm going to focus on before Thanksgiving and right. this is what they'll like explore before the winter holidays so that I know kind of the avenues that I'm going about. Yeah. But what is the most important? I think let's imagine like ideally if all of us go into our classrooms tomorrow and we're like, okay, everything feels set up and the physical space is what we need, then what is the most substantial thing that we go, what do we do after that? And is that long range planning or is that like what you were saying about like getting your mind kind of psyched for it? Yeah, I think first, first month like community building activities, getting to know the kids is probably the most important, I would think. What we found out from our discussion was um, we had different ideas and obviously similar ideas, but it, for us it kind of 
we unearthed that it depended on maybe what grade you teach. Um, you know, I'm in grade six, which is kindergarten. You know, Sonia and I are grade five, six, and and then also maybe where you are in terms of you know on the spectrum of the number of years that you've taught your 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 priorities might shift right so um, for Laura it was communication with parents and, and home visits were were pretty powerful for her for me it was physical space um, getting that that set up and then you know Sonia she she said you know maybe the activities and the norms establishing them so that's what came out of it from us. It really depended on where you were, and uh, that's all I have. Our group basically talked about physical space a lot um, and uh, making sure that you are completely confident and comfortable in your room so that when the kids come in, you are basically, you have anticipated most of what they're going to say and do, and, uh, and you're confident uh, because you are the lone person and you have to, to run the show to start with get to know your kids and, and let them become comfortable. And what I try and establish for, for my class is their ability to own it themselves too and make it a shared home between me and, and them and uh, make it so it's their responsibility too to, to take ownership of what goes on in the room. And I think that's it for our group. I think so, yeah. But uh, it's also interesting to note with our post-its, we ended up kind of with a, a Venn diagram uh, but uh, most of the po post-its uh, seem to involve some social aspect uh, of what's going on in the classroom. We felt like the physical space was really important and um, like how the space is organized, the flow of the room, there being um, labels for kids spaces so they knew what was theirs and um, theirs alone, like their sort of cubby area and that sort of thing. But we also were in conflict because we thought sort of first day activities and like communication and community building and that sort of thing were also really important. Um, but it, you know, we couldn't really decide one or the other because the physical space to being organized and appearing, you know, like things are in order makes people feel calmer and more comfortable. So. We don't have one. <laughs> we had a similar struggle, but then we thought about it as, okay, let's say we walk into your class and everything's set up, then what is the most important thing? And um, we talked about those community building activities in the first month being the most important thing when starting a year. Did you say the first month? Well, <laughs> having them, I think having them planned out for the first month and then seeing where they go throughout the rest of the year um, because then you can be flexible and see which avenues work for that group of kids. But I think starting the year with a few things in your toolkit um, is important. Um, learning is emotional mm. and that um, our, the way that our brain interprets new information is very much linked to that. So having, I feel that having a close relationship or a healthy nurturing relationship with anybody in the classroom would really help increase that type of environment and experience. We uh, kind of decided that our most important thing we discussed was the what we called class slash school community. Um, so whether that be setting up the community between your students and having them feel safe and comfortable in the space, setting up routines, setting up expectations, but then also um, your collaboration with other teachers, if you're working with other teachers, and kind of making those expectations that happen in the class happen throughout the school with other adults as well as with, so we said, student to student, teacher to teacher, and then class to other teachers kind of uh, relationships as well. Teaching is a pretty lonely kind of occupation and it's great to be connected to other people who are teaching the same sort of thing. And what we want you to do is to feel that we're creating a network here that we can all help and support each other uh, because that's how a community functions well, it's how we hope we will effect change for the positive outside of our schools, not just within the classroom and within the school. but out in society.